Digital assets or tokens might appear to be kind of a novel technological invention, and they are, and that's important, but they're also part of a much larger history. Assets, over time, have become more democratized and more abstracted, and tokens fit into that narrative. So first, democratized. In the Middle Ages, uh, the catalogers of the Doomsday Book basically put forth the ownership of all assets in uh, Middle England in 1066. And they recorded that the king and the church owned about half of all the wealth and a handful of landowners owned the rest. So wealth was highly concentrated. As history evolved and as feudalism gave way to capitalism, a new breed of property owners, of asset owners, came into existence. These were capitalists. Now land was and remains an important asset class, but that wealth was not just driven by land. It was driven by capital goods, by railroads, by oil, and increasingly by a new class of assets, stocks, bonds, bills of lading, receipts, other kinds of abstractions that represented value that wasn't just the soil you could hold in your hands. Over the 20th century, we saw the creation of new kinds of financial technologies and other social innovations that helped to spread the wealth a little bit more. The invention of the mutual fund, the invention of the discount brokerage account, the invention of the ETF, of zero-fee trading, and of course a big social push to encourage ownership of assets. So today, 90% or more uh, of Americans have access to you know, a full suite of banking, and over 60% actually um, have access to investment assets. Now it's still unequal, it's not that we live in a utopia, but over time assets have become more democratized. Interestingly, with the internet and the web, we all went online and started to create all this new value, data, right? Uh, but that new asset, this thing, data, our time, our attention, wasn't something that we got to keep or control or monetize. It was something that was captured asymmetrically by big platforms and other intermediaries. Tokens give us a new way to catalyze that value. So in a way, they are part of the long arc of history of assets becoming more widely democratized. The second thing is that they're also part of the long history of assets becoming abstracted. So in feudal times in an agrarian society, land is the most important asset. It's not the only asset, you know, there were mines and timber mills and so forth, and uh, gold was a medium of exchange. But in general, land was the only thing that really mattered at the time. With capitalism came the invention of new kinds of business models and new kinds of abstractions. So things like the joint stock company. You know, the idea that a company could survive its owners, that the managers could have limited liability, getting a bunch of stockholders to fund a new venture was actually a relatively new concept, but it helped to unleash all sorts of new capability in the economy. Leaders of the old paradigm, leaders of the feudal age, looked at these new abstractions with the same kind of hostility and skepticism that I think a lot of leaders of today's paradigm look at tokens, right? So history doesn't repeat, but it certainly rhymes. And of course, today, most wealth in the economy is not land, per se, it is held in the shares of joint stock companies, of public companies. You know, the wealthiest people in the world are the shareholders of and founders of LVMH and Facebook and Amazon, not the people who happen to have the most farmland. So as the economy advances and as assets become more abstracted, we can surmise or infer that tokens, this new and powerful asset class, will begin to capture more of the value.